Today on Geek Devotions, we're talking Final Fantasy XIV and what God's future for us looks like, no matter how bleak. Hello, and welcome to Geek Devotions, the show from devoted geeks who are devoted to letting you know that you are loved. I'm Drew, and if you're new to Geek Devotions, we take geek pop culture items like movies, video games, and comics, and use them to let people know that they are loved. So if you don't watch past this moment, know this. You're loved, you're cared for, and there is a plan and purpose for your life. Don't give up. Along with being the co-host of a podcast all about the promotion and enjoyment of animated movies and TV shows, The Cellcast, which you can go check out at thecellcast.podbean.com. That's cell with a single L. Uh, I'm also an avid gamer, and the game that... I keep falling back on recently has been Final Fantasy XIV. I've actually been playing the game for about four years. And uh, with the newest expansion, Endwalker, coming out on December 7th, I've been getting caught back up on the main storyline quest, and I can't help but be reminded of some of the stories I've heard about version 1.0 when it was released back in 2010. And at the time, I wasn't playing the game, but I mean, you hear about all these stories. Uh, Version 1.0 of the game was released to abysmal reviews with uh, Metacritic averaging a score of 49 out of 100. The game was full of bugs, questionable design choices, and flower pots so meticulously rendered that due to the sheer number of times they were copy and pasted throughout the game, The game's frame rate was slow to a crawl on even the most high-end PCs of the time. The game even included a fatigue system to keep hardcore players from outpacing the more casual players. Although in reality, it was to keep the hardcore players from hitting the max level too fast because then they would discover that there was absolutely nothing for them to do. The game was also supposed to be released on the PlayStation 3 but it would be determined that that would be next to impossible for it to happen because the game's code was so horribly spaghettified that programmers were hesitant to work on it because they didn't know how any change would affect seemingly unconnected parts of the game. Because of all the problems the game was having with development, Nobuaki Komodo and its producer Hiromichi Tanaka were forced to step down from their roles and they were replaced with a newcomer to the Final Fantasy franchise Naoki Yoshida or Yoshi P as we in the community know him he was tasked with saving Final Fantasy XIV and getting that PS3 version released by Square Enix and after reporting back to them all the problems he saw that the game had He said that if the game were to ever continue past version 2.0 or to even release on PlayStation 3 for that matter, the game would have to be rebuilt from the ground up. However, instead of just killing off version 1.0 and starting over from that point, he actually suggested that they keep supporting version 1.0 with updates until version 2.0 was ready. And he he suggested that they finally actually start charging the subscription fees that Final Fantasy XIV was supposed to have from the beginning, but they had never started due to all the problems they were having. You know, customer service and all that. It It was with this seemingly crazy plan that the game started to become what I know it as today. With patch 1.9, a small spec near the moon in Final Fantasy XIV's night sky turned red. Cultists known as the Lambs of Dalamud, spurred on by the Garlean Empire's 7th Imperial Legion, started a ritual that would bring the lesser moon of Dalamud crashing down into Eorzea. While the players were able to stop the ritual, they were too late to stop the moon. Its momentum would bring it down. As Dalamud neared... High-level monsters began spawning near the gates of the three city-states, and rushing in to destroy all sense of safety the city-states were supposed to provide. I heard, one of the stories I heard, was that one server, the players, 
all mounted on these mounts called uh, gubus, which are these kind of big, monstrous, leafy things. They're the goofiest looking things you've ever seen. Uh, and they created this wall of these gubus surrounding the entire city state of Uldah on the outside. And it's it's one of the craziest things I, I've ever seen. Just to protect those people who are inside who are just trying to get a couple of last minute quests or last minute items and money switched around so that when the game would be rebooted, everything, they would be in good shape and they'd be able to get started back up as quickly as possible. With patch 1.23b, all music in the game was replaced with a single track. Answers for Prees for the final week of version 1.0. And when Eorzea needed her heroes most, they were forced out of the game due to the connection to the server being lost. However, as the servers went offline, the players retreated to what is, in my opinion, is one of the greatest video game cutscenes to have ever been made. It is called End of an Era. If you want, you can go over to YouTube right now, go to Final Fantasy XIV's official YouTube page, and uh, search for search for this this uh, trailer. It's going to be near the near the bottom. It's called End of an Era. The thing about though this cutscene is even though it's showing the complete destruction of uh, of Eorzea, it ends with a single solitary phrase. But every end marks a new beginning. When the game relaunched, it carried a subtitle, A Realm Reborn. And in many ways it was. The game grew in success with Metacritic reporting an average score of 84 out of 100. It spawned four new expansions so far, including Heavensward, Stormblood, Shadowbringers, and the soon-to-be-released Endwalker, which Endwalker is supposed to close out the current story arc. The current subscriber count for the game is estimated at 24 million players. But as great as all this news is for the game, perhaps the first ray of hope the game had came before version 2.0 ever released. Because you see, in order to encourage players to actually pay that subscription fee that they hadn't had to pay before, uh, they created what they called the Legacy Program. Players who had played 1.0 and had racked up 90 days of subscription time could register as Legacy players. And along with a couple other perks, as long as they signed up by a certain time, legacy players would get their names in the end credits of, of A Realm Reborn when it released. And so many players signed up for this program in time that on in 2017 in Frankfurt, Germany, at the Final Fantasy XIV Fan Fest, try saying that three times fast, the Guinness Book of World Records awarded Final Fantasy XIV the award for the longest end credits in an MMO video game at one hour and 38 minutes, of which most of that time is nothing but listing the names of the legacy players. So you might be wondering, you know, this story is great and all, Drew, but what does this have to do with anything uh, how, do, how are you getting a devotion out of this? You might be wondering. Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, in the ESV, it states, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Because you see, before we were Christians, we were the directors of our lives. And as sinners, we made many questionable decisions that had we stayed in the director's chair would not have turned out good. But by us stepping down from the director's chair and letting God direct our lives, even when we go through a calamity that will bring about the end of the world as we know it. According to Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. And our and one day our world, I mean, I guess you could say our realm, it will pass away, and a new one will be reborn in its place. At least that's what Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 5 say. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, 
and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of the heavens from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And that's what I want to encourage you guys with. Because if you're a Christian, and you've given your life to God, and you're staying within his will, you are you're a new creation everything and everything's going to work out for your good as long as you stay within god's will and eventually we'll all go to heaven and if you're not a christian man i suggest getting in touch with many people in this group that will help you with that um i guess that would be my question is uh, what calamities has god brought you through what hard endings have you faced and God's brought you through it. And also, do you like playing Final Fantasy games? Do you like MMOs? Uh, so if and if you do, hey, we're about to get a new game. We'd lo- I'd love to see you in Eorzea. Uh, once again, I said, you know, I'm my name's Drew. I'm the co-host of a podcast called The Cellcast, where we uh, we review animated movies and television shows. We have a good time. We bring, uh, and when, you know, Christian stuff does come up while we don't, you know, just go out of our way to look for it. We do, we don't shy away from it. We bring it up and we talk about it. And we, we, we have a good time doing it. It's, it's a fun show. It's meant to be, it's, if you like cartoons, if you haven't seen cartoons in a while, if you used to like cartoons, if you were ever a child and watched cartoons and have any nostalgia, come check us out over at the Cellcast. And uh, we have a good time over there. And uh, once again, uh, I guess that's going to be it for me, guys. So uh, stay devoted. Peace and love.